Okay guys, here's the demo of the CFK-10. I'm going to do a uh, light up and uh, we'll do a, a run here. This is the first time with uh, with this unit um, of any of them. Um, this is the first assembled one. So I'm going to pull the catch drill out and get some fuel in and get it started. This will probably be a little overkill. I want to try to get it on camera. Anytime I point a camera at something, that never works out. So, right. go to the extreme here. In the last video I did, um, I used some pine and it smoked. And people were like, oh my god, this thing smokes. And that's not typically, uh, it's not actually typical if you're using a good, good fuel to get it started. Not that it doesn't smoke on startup. It's gonna, it's gonna make some, some smoke. But once you, once you get it going and the process is started in it, it's uh, fairly uh, smokeless. All right, so I'm gonna. Normally I have buckets uh, already preloaded and I just dump them in. Once it really gets going, it's, it doesn't produce a whole lot of smoke. You can, hopefully you guys can hear this. Alright, so I'm just going to let her go. I'll come back and uh, you know, I'll let the startup fuel burn down and then I'll, I'll reload it and then I'll let it, let it process. And we'll come back. Alright guys, so she's been running for a while so I just shook it down I'm gonna load some more fuel in it we just had a, a big rain here so it's been out here uh, running while I stayed out of the rain but uh you know if you don't want to make smoke don't put wet fuel in the machine and that is a uh, a great way to reclaim engine exhaust heat and we'll be building a uh, a dryer out of, out of barrel drums um, later on to uh, pipe your your engine exhaust into to uh, dry your fuel um, this fuel I just put that tarp on there today but it's rained here quite a bit so you can see this fuel isn't exactly dry and uh, you know, I get this uh, from a, a shipping company, 
that's down the road. I pretty much have an endless supply of that. You know, this is something where, you know, a, uh, a direct wood gas fire isn't going to cut it because you're going to be, most people have the perception they're going to run something like that. Well, there's a reason that's sitting in the shed. That thing hasn't ran in years. We're, we're done with that. If you want to, if you think that's easier, then you know, it's uh, up to you. But, you know, this is very little work. Um, prepping fuel for that, I just chop that up with a chop saw. It takes less than 10 minutes to, to chop up a uh, fuel to fill that barrel. And I'll get 50% of that back for my generator, which, you know, when you're running a chipper, you know, it doesn't run on air, it runs on gasoline. So how many BTU do you think fits in that fuel tank? That's a, I think a three gallon. So that's like 300,000 BTU or more, 350. <laughs> Where that weighs is about 50 pounds. That's probably about, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know the, the numbers off the top of my head. I'd have to uh, get a calculator. <laughs> I'm not that good. <laughs> I'll have to figure that out another time. But uh, it, it, it actually, I've, I've crunched the numbers and it actually comes out about even. And this is actually less work than uh, doing a, a direct wood chip processing. However, we will be doing a, a chip fuel kiln. And that's what those chips are for. But I buy them. I, I, don't, I wouldn't even attempt to make that much fuel. If you look behind here, I just happen to uh, be behind a company that produces massive amounts of wood chips. So this right here is a, a front end loader bucket and they just dump it over the, the side here for me and I paid 50 bucks for that. It's not even worth my time trying to chip that much fuel. So anyway, um, yeah, anytime you're dealing with this, man, make sure you're wearing gloves. I just burnt myself. I left the, uh, the, the tool in the, uh, the shaker, and I grabbed it and burnt my hand. Alright, so when you load it, you pretty much want to use a bucket. Keep your face up. shake her down a little bit all right so I'm gonna add some more fuel So that's, this is what I'm going to add and that will probably fill it. So I'm gonna let her go some more until that uh, the catch barrel is full. So we'll come back a little later. All right, so I'm gonna remove the barrel and swap it out.
as easy as that. All right, so I'll give you a, a peek inside the, the barrel here. Oof. So that is full. So what I'm gonna do is I'll let that cool and I'm gonna get a weight on that. And I did figure out what my what one of them weigh full, but I have to get a moisture content reading yet. I think this is roughly 25 to 30 percent moisture content, and it weighed uh, 75 pounds. So we'll see what uh, we get. Usually I yield per volume about 50 percent. So we'll see what that is per weight, and that's going to be different. So. I'll leave that in the comments, but that's the basic operation. Alright guys, thanks for watching.